This gameplay video is brought to you by very generous patron, Shuffles. Omnath, Locus of All versus Yashan, Umori, and Atla Palani. I've uh, got pretty much nothing there. Don't have triple blue for Blue Sun Zenith. Villainous Wealth isn't going to do much of anything either. So we just hope for some more ramp in the second hand. Okay, we've got more going there. We can get triple green. Crackling Doom might be able to buy us some time. We've got a board wipe as well. No ramp, but we do have a little bit of a control game going there. So, yeah, against my better judgment, we'll try this one. Draw into an island on turn one. Mox Amber on turn one for Atlapalani, which is pretty useless, and they don't have any colours thanks to a Homeward Path. Turn one Arbor Elf for Yisan, so just in case of hoping that this isn't a really, really strong Yisan deck that's going to go off on turn four. But we'll likely see the commander next turn. So that means that we might have to hold up Crackling Doom. So if we go for a red and green source with the Scalding Town, we should still be able to hold up Crackling Doom and get the Tribute to the World Tree down sometime soon. Drew in two Muldrotha, by the way. Boros Signet now from Atla Palani, and definitely getting the Boros Colours going, thanks to our Plateau. Crashing Drawbridge from Amori, and alright, not seeing the Commander, instead it is Elvish Arch Druid, so maybe... It's probably safe to assume that this is an Elf Tribal deck, although maybe there's just lots of Mana Dorks in the deck and Elvish Arch Druid goes well with that. So maybe just holding on to Supreme Verdict is the way to go here. We'll get down the Tribute to the World Tree, I think. Okay, and Atla Palani fixing the colours nicely. There's a Yavamaya Cradle of Growth, which would have helped us get down our triple green if we hadn't played around it the whole game, so that's good seeing Atla Palani into the board wipe. Hopefully we'll see Yashan next turn as well. Not worthy there's a Mana Vault here as well for the Atla Palani player, so really going off there. Vassal Thrull for what looks like a Mono Black player. Still not sure what tribe our opponent's aiming at. Still no commander. Groin Rights of Itlamok. Might still be worth going for Supreme Verdict, maybe just a Crackling Doom to get rid of the Atla Palani. Force them to recast that so that they can recast that, we can wait for Yisan again and still go for the board wipe. Just trying to make the game last as long as possible at this point, thanks to our pretty slow opening hand. Saw revealed a Quirion Ranger, which we don't mind seeing into the board wipe either. Casting a Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, into that. So uh, that likely means that, yeah, return a forest, untap a creature, so they'll have the three mana for the Yesan, and it will have two power thanks to the fact that it's not an elf, so they'll be able to choose what they sacrifice to a cackling doom, or crackling doom, so yeah, pretty rough, they're going to get a free turn with the Yesan. We don't want Atla Palani to make any egg tokens and then have them die during a board wipe. So maybe it's still worth going for the Crackling Doom. Could maybe encourage our opponent, before they sacrifice a creature, to go for their Yisan. Because they need the three creatures in play to get it into play. Uh, right. Island. Arcane Signet we just drew into. And um, before our opponent has Summoning Sickness fall off at the Palani, we'll go for the Crackling Doom now. Uh, the Thrall and the Atlapalana being sacrificed there, the Arbor Elf goes down. They didn't decide to uh, get down their Yisan in response to that, which means that we might be able to be more reactionary and wait for them to get it down next turn so that we can wipe the board, assuming Atlapalani comes down again here. Might even see the Amori and wrap that up in a Supreme Verdict as well. Oh, another Planeswalker, Elspeth's son's champion, which plays right into the board wipe's hand, unfortunately. Maybe Amori will be able to get something down with haste thanks to the drawbridge and start hitting that thing. Making some soldier tokens of course. And uh, yeah, this thing does tap for mana now thanks to the planeswalker being in place. So Cryptolithrite comes down after that which will have the soldier tokens become mana dorks once they do not have summoning sickness anymore. Cryptgast for the mono black player. So it might be that the best thing we can hope for at this point is Coma. After a turn cycle, we'll be able to switch off the Elspeth and hold up Indestructible on the Coma. Then we can Supreme Verdict with Indestructible on it and swing in at Planeswalkers and start dealing with those. Alright, an E-Witness going to be cast and that will grab back the Arbor Elf, the only target they've got available. Not worthy they do have a Reliquary Tower in play with only one card in hand. Alright, they went for the Vivian Minus last turn and they've gone for it again here. 
So one of the face down exile cards is still face down in exile, but playing an Azusa from exile and then returning a land to hand with the Quirium Ranger, but they can play multiple lands a turn, so just playing that out again. Doing it to untap the Elvish Arch Druid, making use of the Quirium Ranger to untap the Elvish Arch Druid. And how many creatures do you need for this thing? You need four or more creatures and this will turn into a Gaia's Cradle. So plenty of mana available at this point. And it's just a forest for us. So are we just taking a turn off here? It's annoying that we can't get down Coma because we could be drawing lots of cards into the Tribute. But I don't want to go Supreme Verdict yet with Elspeth in play. We're actually playing into Elspeth's hand there. We need to be able to dodge the Minus on that also. So yeah, tricky spot here. But this will encourage our opponents to use their removal. Could play our commander, but we're just adding summoning sickness to it. Could get it back out with Muldrotha though, maybe. That would cost 10 mana in total. Which isn't necessarily the worst thing. I mean, if we're just going to wrap Omnath up in a board wipe anyway, it's going to be in the next turn or two. So we might as well try and get some card advantage out of it, I suppose. Holding on to the fetch and not tapping mana for the Yavimaya because we can get another tap land out with that so that we don't draw into it later when we're desperate for an additional mana. So drawing into tribute to the world tree, we'll have to wait until next turn before we get the ability off with Omnath. But we can start floating mana and ramping at least. Fully expecting to lose Omnath to our own board wipe. Just drawing into another land with the Badlands. Elspeth making some more creatures. And then we see Corsa of Crufix seeing the top card of the library is Celestia Charm. So that could get rid of our coma. Good to know that they've got that. Because that will dodge the indestructible. Now at the Wandering Emperor. So uh, it's Atla Palani Super Friends maybe. Putting a plus counter on the Corsa of Crufix and giving it first strike. Yeah, it's annoying that the Celestia Charm is next in the turn order because it'd be nice to have a turn cycle with Coma so that we can draw cards with that Tribute Mage or Tribute to the World Tree. So even if we lose this, we'll have drawn cards off it at least and maybe switched off Planeswalkers for a turn. See what the Black player can do with all this mana. Five Swamps in play, so ten mana from the Grip Ghast. That is an Avatar of Woe. Destroy a creature and it can't be regenerated, but they're going to need Summoning Sickness to be removed from that, so... Maybe this is what the Crashing Drawbridge is for. I'm still not sure why it's Sumori in the deck. Not really sure what the aim is with that commander. And then a Withered Wretch after that for some Graveyard Hate. Crashing Drawbridge giving their stuff haste. And they do have Fear on the Avatar of Woe, so swinging straight through and dealing with this Elspeth, that's really good. They'd need a black or artifact creature, I think Fear is. Or is this the one? Yeah, artifact and or black creatures for Fear. I think Intimidate is the version that has you match colours. So the Sun's Champion going down is excellent there. Going to have to hold off on the board wipe so that this can deal with the other Planeswalker as well. But it might be that we can get the Celestia Charm over onto the Avatar of Woe. And that obviously opens us up to go for the Coma. And we're seeing shenanigans from... The mono green player untapping forests with the Arbor Elf, or one forest with the Arbor Elf. Yisan the Wanderer Bard has come into play as well. Does have Summoning Sickness though. Playing a Gaia's Blessing, just using that to draw a card pretty much. So as much as I want to wipe the board, because Yisan's in play, I think we need to leave these two alone to pitch it out for a while until we can see the back of the Planeswalker. Untapping the Elvish Arch Druid with the Quirion Feeder again. And obviously they can just replay the land that they bounce straight away thanks to Azusa. Now tapping down for a bunch of mana off the Itlamok. And now we see a Scrib Ranger, similar effect. We're just lucky that they can't activate their commander yet. End raise four runners. Don't think they can take anyone out here, at least. Might try and trample through to that Planeswalker. Zero cards in hand and they jump up to four and three power creatures. So now untapping the Arbor Elf, which is now 4-4 with the Fairy. Replaying the land yet again. And all of their stuff does get Vigilance from the End Raise Forerunners. So they can swing in and then tap for mana and stuff afterwards. I don't see what they do with the mana, but that's an option they've got here. Okay, and not swinging in. Why do you play Baby Crater Hoof if you're not going to swing in? That's weird. Alright, now do we need to float mana? I don't think we really need to bother, to be honest. So... Yeah, we'll just go for the tricycle land so that we don't draw into it later. 
Oh, and I should have floated for the um, try on that we do have. There was no reason not to do that. Pass through the turn accidentally there. Okay, a Utopia Sprawl. Um, let's see what we get with the Omnath. Yeah, there was no reason for the Mono Green player not to take out the Planeswalker there. Um, unless they're trying to encourage this thing to tap to take it out so that it doesn't blow up any of their stuff. That might be what the reasoning was there. But I think you'd have to assume that Celestia Charm is going to take this out next turn. Anyway, we just draw into a land with the Omnath. So, might as well play that, because our opponents know about it now. Utopia Sprawl has to go on a forest, so we'll just put that on the Indantha Triome. And that is effectively free ramp for the turn. Oh, they can actually minus this down, can't they? And get rid of the Avatar of Woe. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go for the Coma now for the sake of drawing cards. It's potentially throwing it away, but we've taken too many turns not doing anything here. And our opponents are going pretty quick. It might be that the Coma does survive by some miracle and we can actually deal with the Yisan. I mean, they can do stuff during the upkeep a little bit, but they'll want to replay lands and stuff. So, yeah. We're in a tricky spot either way here. Just cleared another land off the top with the Coma coming into play. So like I said, fully expecting to lose the Coma here, but we'll draw a few cards in the process at least. When do we make the token? Uh, the token is made during the upkeep, which means they can't draw into the Celestia Charm yet. Only one card in hand over there. I don't think we know what it is. So that triggers the Tribute to the World Tree again, and we'll draw another card. I think we'll... Activate the coma to tap this thing down so that it can't exile the avatar of woe. So if they use the Celestia charm on coma, then this thing will still be able to get through to it at least. Drew into chromatic orrery, which isn't the worst. So we'll tap down the planeswalker by sacrificing a coma's coil, and we're not going to be able to give that thing indestructible this turn, but it's exile that we're playing against anyway. This is where it's relevant that we are seeing the top of our opponent's library with the Crufix, Corsa of Crufix, because we wouldn't have been able to play around that otherwise. We know that there's a Wrath of God incoming as well, which might have us hold on to the Supreme Verdict for as long as we can. Yeah, so going Celestia Charm to get rid of the Coma, which, like I said before, we were fully expecting that, but we drew a couple of cards, and Avatar of Woe is free to deal with the Planeswalker now. Going to see the Atla Palani here, I would assume, which would suggest that they're not looking at the Wrath of God. And then tapping down some creatures into the last card in their hand, that is Verdurous Gear Hulk. So it looks like, yeah, they're putting two onto the commander and then one on each of the other non-token creatures. But they are empty-handed now, as is Yisan. It's just a case of hoping Yisan can't go off too much here. Might be worth the Avatar of War destroying the Yisan, actually. And leaving this thing in play. If our opponent knows what we had in hand, then the Withered Wretch is going to be relevant as well with the Muldrotha in play. Um, this does go through to the Planeswalker, which means we're going to see some Yisan shenanigans next turn. Oh, and this is an artifact actually, isn't it? Yeah, I forgot about that as well, so they can block with that. So this would have been much better served going on to the Yisan in that case. So still not dealing with this thing. The Wretch goes for exiling the Gaia's Blessing, and for our Crackling Doom as well, so it looks like our opponent doesn't have too much of anything else to go for. Getting rid of our lands as well, which is actually relevant with the Muldrotha. Like I said, we do have another Fetch available at least, which I'm obviously not going to crack yet. Elspeth gets exiled, the Gear Hulk gets exiled, and the Charm gets exiled, so basically all of our graveyards going down. Cost them a lot of mana to do that. But, like I said, doesn't look like they've got anything else, so two cards in hand and passing the turn. And we'll see how much damage the mono green player can do here. So, Yisan getting activated during the first main phase. Grabbing a Wywood Symbiote. Arbor Elf untaps a land. Then untapping a creature. Uh, they bounce the Arbor back to hand, so untapping the commander, of course. That's with the Wywood Symbiote. Activate Yisan for an Elvish Visionary. Then using the Scrib Ranger to untap the Yisan, replaying the forest they bounced. Then Yisan again, using the Elvish Archdruid mana this time. And that's a combo piece, Hyrax Tower Scout. Untaps the Yisan, activating the commander, floating at 8 mana after the activation, thanks to the Itlamok. Playing out a Yever. 
on tapping with the Quirion Ranger this time. Activate Yesan. And now we see an acidic slime off the Yesan. Blowing up the Cryptolith right is a good target. Arbor Elf being replayed. And there we go. I was just thinking about <laughs> how they were going to bounce creatures because they'll likely want this back in hand. Team of Sabretooth being played. And Yesan then decided to scoop. Awesome. So, Solitaire turn followed by scooping. I'm sure our opponent, if he knew his deck better, he might be, um, he might have dragged it off the internet and doesn't really know how to play it yet. I'm sure he could have comboed off on us there because it's Yesan and it does it with minimal effort. Omnath triggers during our main phase. And we draw ourselves into a Nyx Bloom Ancient, which is interesting. Um, I'm not going to play it though, thanks to the Wrath, so we'll make. A bunch of mana. We can go blue, uh, blue and green. I don't think it really matters. Because what I will do is go for the Chromatic Orrery here. Oh, excellent. And the Mono Black player scoops as well. So it's just a 1v1. We need to think about what we're doing here now then. Welcome to Magic Online. Yeah, maybe it is just the Nyx Bloom Ancient in that case. Uh, we'll go for the Supreme Verdict. And that obviously whites the board. Not going to put our commander in the command zone and just hope that we can stick the Muldrotha to play it out. Um, drop ourselves. There's a Yavamaya in play, so it doesn't matter. We'll just go for the Cascading Cataracts and get down the Nyx Bloom Ancient for triple mana. That will draw us a card to the World Tree. And that lets us see expansion. Uh, I've got a mana floating here. Maybe I tap down an extra land I didn't need to tap. So maybe could have held up expansion actually. Anyway, pass over to our opponent. Our opponent went for the Wrath of God there, forced them to use it with the triple mana enabler, uh, making a samurai token with the Wandering Emperor, is it called? Yeah, the Wandering Emperor. Luckily we've got the uh, Muldrotha available to us still. There is a Ruinous Ultimatum, which can yeah, probably win us the game pretty much. Let's get down the Badlands, because we've got green on all of our lands. Chromatic Orrery is definitely one to play here. And then probably go for Zyris because I don't want to give my opponent a turn with Muldrotha in play. I want to drop Muldrotha and pull Omnath out of the bin in the same turn. Um, maybe even Nyx Bloom in the same turn. That might be asking a bit too much. So the Orrery allows us into Zyris and that drew us into Voidrend. Tribute to the World Tree has done some work for us this game. Holding up Voidrend is very good though. We do have a flyer in play now as well, so we'll be able to start hitting the Planeswalker. A plus counter going on to the Samurai token. Elixir of Immortality, think the Graveyard. No, the Graveyard not quite empty. Cryptolith right, the Corsa of Crufix and Wrath of God in there. You go for gaining five life and shuffling that stuff around. So let's hold on to the Voidrend for as long as we can. We'll be able to hit this. And they won't be able to exile the Zyrus because it's a minus two. This will be on one loyalty. So we can hold on to the Void Rend and get rid of this over the course of a turn or two. So now with a surplus of mana we get into a Nature's Law, which we're not really all that eager to have. Um, yeah, and I can't be bothered to work out whether we should go for Nature's Law first, to be honest. So let's see here. We want six mana for the Muldrotha will allow us into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the Nyx Bloom. That'll be the enchantment and then we'll have... Lots of mana for the Omnath, so yeah, get the Muldrotha in. Draws us a card to the Tribute to the World Tree. And there is a Worldly Tutor, which I'm not worried about just yet. Cast that as an enchantment from the bin. So down comes Nyx Bloom Ancient. That actually makes it, uh, we get Team Ascendancy for haste as well, which is relevant. So uh, that actually makes it worth going for the, um, for the Nature's Law now, because it nets us mana. So it's two to play it, but we've tapped the land down for three. And obviously the land that enters will tap for three as well. Uh, so we'll just go for a tiger, I think is fine. So we've effectively generated four mana for the price of two mana. And then we'll have to get down the Omnath here, because I don't want my opponent to deal with our Muldrotha that is in play. And thanks to the Orrery, it doesn't matter how we tap our colours, so we can just go for triple mana off one land, and the Orrery will allow us to uh, pay any colours. So we'll put two life into it as well, and all this 
triple red mana from the land can go into casting the three colours, or four colours from the Omnath. Allows us into a Tome of the Guild Pact. This just counts for lands. No, it's a permanent, alright, so that will give us, yeah, still only three mana. So just go for Team Ascendancy is fine here, I think, to give our stuff haste. Again, we can do triple mana off a land, but still play Teamer uh, colours here. So that is more card draw available for us, but more importantly, it gives our stuff haste. So we'll swing in here at our opponent, deal with the Wanderer first. Take the Trampler over at the Wanderer to definitely deal with it. So a 5-5 Trampler against a 3-3 and a 3-5 Flyer. So they can chump block some damage at themselves if they want. Otherwise, they'll be taking a hit for 10 points of damage. Deciding to keep the token in play, they do lose the Wanderer. And yeah, we're just holding up Void Rend. We've got the Expansion Explosion still. Obviously, Worldly Tutor as well. Probably just float the mana into the Omnath so that we've got a surplus next turn. All depends on what our opponent does. He's in top deck mode and just one card in hand. Not sure if he can afford his commander. Apparently not. So yeah, our opponent played it out for a bit, but it's looking pretty obvious what's going to happen over the next few turns here. Apologies that those two plays scooped, but... The quality of Magic Online players has really, really depleted in the past few months. And all I can do is ban them. I've banned those two players now, so we won't see them again. But it seems as though every game I play is going to have early scoopers in it. No matter how many people I ban, I can't outswim the tide, apparently. So we saw a little bit of what you can do with Omnath here, at least. Uh, it's just a shame that it wasn't in a complete game. But if you see this, then it's the best game I got, so... Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Big thank you to the Atla Palani player for actually playing it out. And to the patrons for supporting the channel. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.